go to some pretty interesting places working on bad influence and today's a rare opportunity to see something very special. Even the ducks here are rare, but I'm not here to study the local wildlife. No, today I've trekked to the heart of England, to a top secret location in deepest Warwickshire. This company is rare for lots of reasons. They only develop games for Nintendo, they've just invented a new way to create SNES games, and above all, they're called Rare. This is the first of the next generation of SNES games, Donkey Kong Country. When the Donkey Kong character appeared in the early 80s, he was Mario's arch enemy. Now he's changed his ways and become a good guy, with a menagerie of animal helpers. All the characters were created using an entirely new technique. This is Diddy, Donkey Kong's monkey helper. To produce him, the programmers built a wireframe model inside their powerful silicon graphics computer. With Donkey Kong Country, Rare were the first software producers to use serious hardware like this to produce graphics of a different class. The SGI machine was also used to shade the wireframe model so they could check Diddy out in 3D. When they were completely happy with the way he looked outside, they started work on his insides. They programmed him with an accurate skeleton so he could only bend in the right places. That made the next job a lot easier, making him move. You may have spotted that Diddy runs along in a very realistic way. That's because the programmers modelled him from real life. One of them popped around the corner to try across the zoo with his home video camera. And it certainly seems to have had an interesting effect on this programmer. The next task was to build the different Donkey Kong worlds. Each world has textures and shapes scanned in from real life. Ferns, trees and even a rusty shovel. The textures are wrapped around more wireframe models. There are up to three different layers in each background to give a feeling of depth and movement as the characters move through the game. The graphics are so good that when it was first revealed, nobody believed the game was really running on the SNES. In the game, if you want to get ahead, get a banana, the more the merrier. So, the programmers have devised clever ways of arranging them everywhere. This is what's known as the banana editor, and it lets you put the bananas anywhere you want in the game. Here's one I prepared earlier. I finally got to meet one of Rare's founders, Tim Stamper, in his dark den. So, Tim, what's so special about Donkey Kong Country? Um, it looks amazing because it really it's all in 3D. If, if these characters were real and they lived, that's what they'd look like. Now, take me to your favourite level. I, I'll take you to the snow level. The snow level was the most difficult to programme. It took 48 hours of computer time to build up a single scene. The blizzard sequence has a level of realism never seen before in a SNES game. So, why is this your favourite? I think the, the effect was dynamite. It's really a massive blizzard now, and the snowflakes nearer us are much bigger. Yes, they are. Um, there's multi parallaxing layers of snow, maybe 12 or 14 layers. Um, still with the backgrounds on screen, so quite a feat on Super NES. And that was only possible. <laughs> oh, I died. <laughs> well, it was snowing for home, it was, can yeah. be forgiven. Yet another rare sighting, a glimpse of Nintendo's next generation super console, the Ultra 64. This is Killer Instinct, one of the first games to be developed on it. It'll be in the arcades at the end of this year and on the identical home version at the end of 1995. Hey, check out this 27-hit combo. <laughs> Well, it's been a rare old day and I've been the first person to ever visit Donkey Kong's treehouse. This is Violet Berlin reporting from Level 97, Donkey Kong Country, Warwickshire. <laughs>